Exactly two and a half weeks ago today, I had a laparoscopic hysterectomy with the Da Vinci robot. So this is simply my hysterectomy story. So hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Renee and this is my hysterectomy story from the day of surgery to the two week recovery point. That is when I really felt like I turned a corner and things started getting better. And I'm gonna be honest, my recovery was not easy. I watched so many women's stories on YouTube before my surgery because I wanted to know what to expect. And so many women said, oh, it's easy breezy. After three days, you feel great. And after a week, you're up doing your things. And that was not my experience at all. I had the hysterectomy because I had a very large uterine fibroid, very large, and I had some cells in my cervix that I had biopsied. They came back to be non-cancerous, but still they were concerning, they were abnormal. And given my family history, my mother had uterine cancer, I needed to have the hysterectomy, and my surgeon took out my ovaries, my fallopian tubes, my uterus, and my cervix. So I had a total hysterectomy. I'm 51 years old, and before the hysterectomy, I was not in menopause. I had no symptoms of menopause, but let me tell you what, I am now in menopause. Full on, full blown menopause, and it happened about a week after my surgery but we're gonna get to that. And later on in the video, I'm gonna tell you several things that really surprised me. This soon after surgery, benefits I'm seeing, the positives, some great things that'll come out of this surgery that I never even expected to happen. So I'm just gonna break it all down for you in this video. So it is surgery day for me. Finally, the day is here. I'm having a laparoscopic hysterectomy and I have to report to the hospital in 30 minutes. My husband and I drove to Nashville, Tennessee last night. We're staying in a hotel room simply because I live in a very small town and I wanted to have a surgeon that was a specialist in laparoscopic robotic hysterectomies. So we've chosen to have this done in Nashville, Tennessee. So it's about a two hour drive from where I live to Nashville. So we drove down last night, I did not get any sleep, none. Like my mind just would not uh, go to sleep. I thought I wasn't nervous, but turns out I, I guess I am internally very anxious and my mind just couldn't turn off. All day yesterday, I, I couldn't stop thinking about this. So I checked in the hospital at 5.30 in the morning. They got me back in my room, got me prepped and IV and all the things. And one interesting thing that I wanted to tell you all, they gave me a list of medications that they were gonna give me before I went into the surgery. They gave me an oxycodone, Celebrex, gabapentin for nerve pain, Tylenol, Mesocline, Decadron. They gave me a patch behind my ear because I do get motion sickness. And they gave me a heparin shot, a blood thinner. And that was behind the arm. All the other medications were pills. So as soon as I got back in the room, I took all this medication, got my IV. They put those really weird air filled socks on your legs that actually massage your legs while you're in surgery so that you don't get a blood clot and then my husband was allowed to come back in the room with me i had a nurse advocate who was going to be in surgery with me he came in and introduced himself when the anesthesiologist came in to get me i told her i don't want to see anything i don't want to know anything just seriously knock me out now I remember nothing I don't even remember being wheeled out of the room to go into surgery it was around 7 30 my husband got a text at 8 06 saying the surgery was underway and about 9 45 he received another text saying I was out of surgery in the recovery room so from 9.45 until about 11 o'clock, I stayed in the recovery room, and then they took me into the secondary recovery and brought my husband in to see me. That is when he took this photo of me. I'm in a lot of pain. I woke up and I was in a lot of pain. I remember the nurse asking me my pain level. I said a seven. She said, okay, I'm gonna give you something. And whatever she did worked because the pain definitely came down. About two and a half hours passed. I got up and walked. I ate some peanut butter and crackers. I drank a little bit of water. I just was trying to gain my bearings, trying to wake up, and it took a little while. They put me in a wheelchair, wheeled me out to the car. 1 p.m., and 
I'm in the car heading home. I'm in pain, but the pain medicine has helped, but definitely in a unexpected pain. But okay. I had this little travel pillow that I'd purchased, I had in the car, and oh my gosh, this was a lifesaver. I put it against my belly, put my seatbelt over the top of it, and this kept the pressure of the seatbelt off of my stomach area, off of my incisions, because you are sore, you are in pain, you have fresh incisions, then you have a car ride. Travel pillow is an absolute must. Well, here we are, it's the next morning. Surgery was yesterday. Last night when I got home, I did take my pain medication and I actually slept pretty decently. I had to get up twice to pee during the night. And the hardest part about getting up is using your ab muscles to try to sit yourself up to get up out of the bed. But once I was up and took a minute to just kind of let everything settle, I was okay, I slept pretty decently. When I woke up this morning, my, my tummy is a little swollen. The incision areas are sore, don't wanna to touch them. But right now I'm drinking my coffee. I took my Miralax last night and my gas pills just as a precaution. I've been up for maybe 30 minutes. Pleasantly surprised, I guess you could say, that I have not been in more pain. Now, I might get up and start moving around and it really just hit me. But for now, I'm, I'm okay. I would call it extreme discomfort. But it's about two o'clock in the afternoon right now. I've been up moving. I did take a shower. I just wanted to get cleaned up because I did have a lot of blood on me from yesterday. So I feel a lot better that I've taken a shower and I just let the water run over my hair and my hair air dried. Um, but I'm just sitting on the couch. Randy's home with me, taking care of me. I do have six incisions in my belly area. I'd only anticipated five, but I think um, the surgeon told me my fibroid was, he called it a monster. Those were his words. Weighed about two pounds, and the sixth incision was needed to just get everything out. Something I was not anticipating. Even though I had a laparoscopic hysterectomy, everything was removed from my body vaginally. And there is a lot of soreness and swelling down there it hurts it's very similar to giving birth having a baby and that had never occurred to me that how i would have any discomfort the gas pains that i was warned about that could move up here i've been taking the gas uh, gas x pills just as a precaution this morning i did have some gas pains up in my shoulder areas but it seems to have gone away for now really the only Discomfort is my belly area, the, the incision area. I do not want to touch them. The incisions themselves are very sore and very bruised, but my belly area is very swollen. It seems like as the day has gone on, it has gotten more swollen and my pubic bone is extremely swollen. So I'm gonna show you now what my belly looks like. We're basically 24 hours after surgery. You can see how swollen my belly is. But I have one, two, three, four, five, and six incisions. But this is my swollen berry, belly area, very tender. And these are covered in a glue that will come off in four to five days. So in my shower, I just let the hot water run over my stomach and I did not wash or scrub my stomach. I know I sound very weak and it's not because I'm weak or tired, but to talk, if you know it or not, you have to use your stomach to project your voice and to get a deep breath. And that is what hurts when you try to do any of those things. I sound very raspy and I don't have a lot of ump to get up and speak. This morning I did have a lot of mucus feeling in my throat just from the tube, I think. You know, I wanted to clear my throat, like, <clears throat> you know, clear it out but I could not use my stomach to do that. So it was a couple hours after I'd been awake before I actually could just get that mucus out of my throat. Today, I have only taken Advil and Tylenol. I've been alternating them. I have not had any pain medication today. I don't really feel like I need it. If I need it, I'll take it, but so far I haven't. 
but otherwise I'm, I'm doing okay. So one last check-in for the day after surgery. And as the day has gone on, I have gotten more and more swollen. My belly area, everything is just really, really swollen up. So I've been sitting on the couch with an ice pack. The swelling is really, it's really bad. Didn't expect that at all. Now, when I first stand up from a seated position, the pain grips you. It's like everything is having to readjust and that hurts, but it goes away quickly. And about five minutes ago, I actually had to cough. I got like a, just a dry spell in my throat and I had to cough and that hurt. I was trying to grab my little pillow. And as soon as I realized I had to cough, like I wanted to hold my stomach. So I grabbed the travel pillow and put it across me and I did cough like three times and it hurt really bad but I will catch up with you all tomorrow on day two after surgery and see if anything's improved. Well, this is day two after surgery and I am in bed. I woke up this morning, the soreness was better. I thought this is gonna be such a great day. So I got up and as I started moving around, I realized that I was swelling really bad in my groin and pubic area. I said that started yesterday a little bit and I was keeping ice on it. It went down during the night and I was showing my husband. We're like, yeah, it's better. But then the minute I started moving around this morning, the swelling came back like pretty drastically and I'm really starting to bruise. I called my doctor. I was told there could just be internal bruising or a hematoma on the inside, which I absolutely believe it. That makes sense. So they told me not to be up walking around today, to stay in bed, walking and standing will make the swelling worse. So I am in bed, been putting ice pack on the area, but it hurts. It hurts a lot worse than my belly, my belly area. The swelling has gone down. It is still tender, it's still sore, but the pubic bone area and all of the area, just everything down there, basically bedridden for the day. Voice is better. I feel better overall. I did take a pain pill last night just because I was in some pain and I thought the pain medication might allow me to sleep better. So I did take one pain pill at bedtime, but today I've only had Advil and Tylenol and an ice pack. So this is what my day is going to look like, y'all. So here's my nurse for the day. Alex is up on the bed with me. Maxie, buddy, I can't pick you up. I'm so sorry. He's going all around the bed trying to get up here and I cannot pick him up. Maxie made it up on the bed. This 12 year old boy jumped up on the bed all by himself. This is where he landed and this is where he's gonna stay, right Moo? He just wanted to give me some loving. But it's now day three. It's the morning. I've been up, I've had my coffee and I pooped. I know that's so silly, but I was so afraid that it was going to hurt because I cannot use my stomach muscles. Sneeze, cough, laugh, fart, none of that. It is painful, but I have been taking Miralax every night since I got home from surgery. And this morning when I knew I had to go, so I was having, this is probably TMI, I'm sorry, move on if it is but I could feel the gas in my stomach area yesterday. It would move, it was painful. I was taking my gas medicine, it wasn't helping. So I knew today it was all gonna come out. So when I got the urge to go, I was so afraid it was gonna hurt, but the Miralax made it move along nicely. No pain, it was, the pain was all in my head. It was all anticipated pain. Today, my stomach is much better. It's not nearly as sore. I can get up and down. I can move a lot easier. As you can tell, I'm speaking better. It doesn't hurt to talk. I just don't want to cough. Apparently, there is a little spot in my throat where when they put the tube in, I don't know if they scratched my throat or nicked it or something, but I can just be sitting here and all of a sudden, I'll get this right here on the inside. It makes me have to cough and coughing hurt really, really bad. I do not want to cough. But otherwise, today I'm better. I'm still going to chill out. I'm not leaving the house. I'm going to try to 
not be up moving because since I've been up this morning, I've been awake about two hours. I can tell the swelling is starting to come back and it had gone down during the night. So today I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna stay on the couch. I'm gonna lay in bed if I can and try to just really get the swelling to not come back tomorrow. So things are, are looking up. I'm feeling better. I am going to take a shower today. I'm going to wash my hair. My husband said, why? You're not going anywhere. Nobody's going to see you. And it's because it will make me feel better. So look at me, y'all. Day three. I've had a shower. And I feel so much better. But I wanted to show you all the sutures in my belly area. Day three, I guess we're technically 72 hours from surgery. Yeah, 72 hours from surgery. A lot of this looks worse than it is because of the glue that's on there. The glue has a dark color to it, but I have three on this side, one in my belly button, and two over there. And you can see my belly is very swollen. I'm still collecting a lot of fluid and swelling really bad in my pubic area and around my hips. So I've been trying to stay flat as long as I can for the past two days. And I just had to get up and take a shower and move around and eat lunch. And But I'm feeling better. The sutures are definitely not as sore today. I can get up and down a lot better. It's just every time you do move, I can feel everything inside me sort of adjusting itself. The weight is shifting and that's kind of painful and uncomfortable. So when you go from laying down to sitting up, you just have to take a minute and kind of regain your composure. And then today... I did have a lot of gas in my belly. I've been taking the gas medicine. I did poop this morning, but it's just gas and I could not get it out. So after lunch, I took a gas pill and it seemed to have made it better. I am super hopeful that tomorrow, day four, I am seeing a big improvement. Well, it's day four, day four after surgery and this is my mood, nope. I just took a shower, y'all. Took a shower. Big news. My hair looks still looks like damn it, but I don't care. I'm clean, feeling better today, and I'm not having it. So I woke up this morning. My swelling was down significantly. However, I have started to turn yellow. My entire like pelvic area from hip bone to hip bone is turning yellow from that internal hematoma. So I called my aunt, who's a nurse. She explained that that's my body's way of reabsorbing the blood and the fluid that collected in that area from the trauma. And yellow is good. It means that everything is healing. It doesn't look good, I'll tell you that. It looks pretty yucky, but at least I'm feeling better. I'm standing upright today. I'm moving better, but I'm feeling much better and feeling definitely that I am on the upswing on day four. So I have a list here. The first topic on my list is swelling. I anticipated having five incisions and I actually had six. One very high incision up on my rib cage. And why, I don't know, but for the first 10 days for sure, my ribs were extremely sore. My rib cage on both sides, sore. Not bruised, but just internally sore. And when I tried to lay down at night, I really had to be careful to put, when I would lay down and put pressure on that rib cage, I had to let my body kind of settle into it for a couple minutes and then I was okay. On day one after the surgery, my belly area was swollen, it was puffed up, everything hurts, everything is red, but every day the swelling went down and down and down and down. And now two and a half weeks later, I still have a little bit of swelling, but it is significantly uh, better than the day after surgery. Pain and numbness. The incisions in my belly area, the first two to three days, they are painful if you touch them. Along with pain for me, I did have a numb feeling. Numbness in my pelvic area, numbness around the incisions, it's like pain and numbness combined, but numbness can actually be painful. So there was a little bit of that. My incisions were covered in glue. I didn't have on gauze or band-aids. It was a clear glue. And still today, two and a half weeks after my surgery, the glue is still on five of my six incisions. It's starting to fray off around the edges and come off in pieces, but it's still there. 
I'm not pulling on it. I'm not going to pick it off. I'm just going to let it come off on its own and it's still there. As far as the incisions themselves, I really only had bruising for the first day or two or three. The bruising now is completely gone. I just have little teeny incisions, like I said, are still covered in glue and I think they're going to look pretty good when the glue comes off. Before my hysterectomy, I started taking Miralax. I drank it about two days before the surgery and every single day after my surgery. I took it for a total of 10 days. Now, that's because when you go to poop after surgery, I will tell you, it hurts. You do not want to use those muscles at all, even the teeniest bit to try to use the bathroom. I, I just could not imagine trying to poop, but I continued to take the Miralax so that everything would stay soft and move along nicely when I did have to poop. And honestly, it was discomfort in my belly area, but it happened smoothly. Everything came out just fine. And since then, everything is fine. I've really had no issues with pooping. I have taken a shower every day since surgery. I got in there, I let the warm water run on me. It ran on my belly and honestly, it felt really, really good. I was not able to kind of bend over and shave my legs for at least the first week. And when I washed my hair, I could only do one hand at a time. It hurts to raise your arms. I could not hold both arms up to wash my hair until at least seven days after surgery. I did have what I'm calling surgery brain. I guess from the anesthesia, I just for the first couple of days, and even still now, I just go blank. I can't remember something. I can't remember the name. I forget what I was doing. I just have surgery brain, and I was not expecting that. I have not had any problem since surgery peeing. However, when I do pee, because my fibroid was pressing on my bladder, and now that the fibroid is gone, when I pee, it is a very different and strange sensation. And for about the first week, there was um, almost like a numbness to my bladder. I could feel it. I knew when I had to pee, but when I emptied my bladder, it was a very odd, numb, strange feeling. But I've been able to pee just fine. Every day, other than the first couple of days when I was told to stay in bed, I made sure that I got up and walked in, in small increments. When I say walk, I mean from the couch to the bedroom, and then I would sit down. A little bit later, I would come from the bedroom to the kitchen, and then I would sit down. I did not stay up and walk for long lengths of time. I didn't leave my house for the first, mm, I guess it was day six, I actually left my house. So I did nothing for the first five days. I sat on the couch, I sat in bed, I would roam around the house. I did not pick up anything, nothing. I did not bend over, I didn't lift a single pound. And that is super important because you are so sore and your core can barely handle picking up a glass of water. You don't wanna pick up anything you're not going to pick up anything because it's going to hurt. And so I just simply didn't. The gas pain. Everybody told me, beware of the gas pain. And I was prepared. I had my gas relief pills. And the day after surgery, I did get a little bit of an aching pain feeling right here in my shoulder blades. And I said to my husband, uh oh, that must be the gas pain because I'd never experienced that pain before, but it went away and never had it again. However, I had severe gas pains in my belly and I could feel it moving throughout my stomach and my digestive system. It was extremely painful. You cannot use your stomach. You cannot bear down to try to pass gas. It hurts. So I just took my gas relief pills and did the best that I could. And that was, that was unexpected and that was very painful. I did have an appetite. I ate as usual. I just ate really small quantities. I did not have any bleeding after my hysterectomy other than that initial trip to the bathroom when the nurse took me, there was a little bit of blood and have not had any bleeding since. And because everything is so sore, 
I still, now, two and a half weeks later, I can lift my arms up, but I cannot stretch. I cannot reach to get something. I can bend over if I need to pick something up off the floor, but I cannot bend over to tie my shoes because it puts pressure on my belly area and my belly is still very sore. I just kind of want to stay right here. The first week after surgery, I could not stand upright. I was in a constant hunched over state because when you stand upright, it pulls. I cannot, even still can't, really turn my body. This is about all the mobility that I have. Now, what about menopause? Because my ovaries were removed during my hysterectomy, I did not notice any menopause symptoms for the first three or four or five days, but then they hit me like a ton of bricks. Night sweats and hot flashes. I have the night sweats every single night consistently three times a night. It wakes me up. I am extremely hot. I am sweating. I have to throw the covers off and I get out of bed. I go to the bathroom just to try to cool off. I give it about five minutes. I get back in bed and I go right back to sleep. So I'm not having a problem sleeping, but the night sweats are extreme and I am so hot. I can barely stand it and it is consistent every night. Now I'm having some hot flashes during the day, maybe once or twice during the day. They're not as extreme as the night sweats. I don't break out in a sweat. I just all of a sudden get really, really warm. It lasts about a minute or two max and then it goes away. So there is that. I am full on menopause and I am excited to see my doctor on my six week checkup to talk about hormone replacement therapy because I am gonna need it. Some things I cannot do that I thought I would be able to do. I cannot make my bed because you cannot pull on the covers. I am not able to do any laundry. I, yes, I can one by one throw something in the washing machine, but we have a top load washing machine and I realized I cannot reach in there to get anything out of the washing machine. I could not walk up to a kitchen counter or a bathroom counter and like lean over the sink to wash my face because I did not want the counter to touch my stomach. That hurt. I've had to be very careful not to let my dogs get in my lap. So there's just unexpected things that I didn't realize I wouldn't be able to do that I am certainly not able to do still two and a half weeks later. Now let's talk about some positives. Some things I never expected to happen that have happily happened since my surgery. I no longer have that fibroid. I don't have the pain from the fibroid, the heaviness from the fibroid, which by the way, it weighed 2.4 pounds. That is what the pathology report said. So without that additional 2.4 pounds sitting in my belly area, I don't have the pain and the discomfort. When I bend over even a little bit, I can tell that it is not there and it is so nice. And just the realization that I'm never gonna have a period again, never. And it is a great feeling. And my bladder. My doctor always said to me, Renee, I can't believe you're not having bladder problems because of this fibroid. And I would just say, well, I don't think I am. Well, apparently I was. And I didn't realize it until the fibroid was gone because I can now go hours and hours without having to pee. I don't pee when I sneeze. I don't pee when I cough. None of those things are happening. My bladder is back to normal. It has its normal capacity. And that is so nice. No more running to the bathroom every single hour. This whole video was to say that the hysterectomy was no fun. I am so glad it is behind me. I am so glad it is two and a half weeks behind me and I cannot wait until it is six weeks behind me. I've seen my doctor. Hopefully I'm released in six weeks and I feel like I'm released in six weeks. I'm ready to get back to life. However, I know the limitations of my body right now. I have three and a half more weeks of restrictions. I can't lift, push, pull anything over 10 pounds. And believe me, I don't want to. I am not going to dare try it because I know my body is still recovering. I do get extremely tired every evening about 6 30. It's just like I all of a sudden run out of gas 
and I have to come in here to the couch and this is where I stay until I go to bed. The hysterectomy was the right thing for me to do. I'm just glad it's behind me. So that's my hysterectomy story, my recovery of the first two and a half weeks. And once I see my doctor at the six week point, I will film another video and let you know how my recovery has continued. So thanks for watching. See you later.